मिक्सरच्या इथे पिवळ्या डब्यात ठेवल्या आणि मी दार बंद करून देणार that you're getting other people organized Jyoti. Yeah. Will recognize that I am not Emma Ackerman. Emma <laughs> unfortunately has had some problems with her computer over the last few days and so I've agreed that I would step in and host today's conversation. My name's Martin Johnston and I'm a long-term friend of Wevolution so I've been with Wevolution on the journey of the last 10 years and in actual fact it will be 10 years in January coming since we a group of women first went to India to discover whether the self-help movement that was growing and blossoming there had anything to teach us here in the United Kingdom. And one of the people that that first group met is going to be our guest today. And I'll say more about her in a minute. I just want to say a tiny bit around what Wevolution is, who it is, I think of it as a movement that helps people, particularly women, to make money, to build community and to make a difference. And it has been one of the privileges of my life to be alongside some of the self-reliant groups as they've gone about that task over the last decade. We're also really delighted that we are co-hosting this series of conversations with the David Hume Institute, a think tank which is focused on understanding and acting upon some of our country's most challenging and most pressing issues. And one of the things that we've learned through Wevolution over the years is the importance of looking beyond our own borders. And in particular, looking to the global south, which has been grappling with some of the is same issues as we grapple with, but in many ways in harder places in more intransigent places, but also in places where innovation is sparking up all the time. And when I think of innovation sparking up all the time, one of the people who springs to mind is Jyoti, uh, who I hope we're going to hear a bit of her story and a bit of the story of the organizations which she has enabled over the last 45 years plus. Um, if you have a question during the course of the conversation, please stick it in the Q&A box or if you've a comment, feel free to use the chat box. Jyoti and I are just going to talk for about 35, 40 minutes. And then in the last 10, 15 minutes, we will pick up some of the questions that people are asking. So, Jyoti, yeah. Hello. welcome. <laughs> it is wonderful to see you today. It's 12.30, just after 12.30 in Scotland, what time is it in Mumbai? Uh, this is around 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. in the evening. Around 6 p.m. And, and tell me how life in Mumbai is at the moment. Uh, winter has just started in Mumbai and we are slowly, uh, I mean, getting normalized, you know, the, the cases of... Uh, pandemic, I mean, the pandemic is little diluting and uh, 
little slow now in mumbai especially and in my state also in maharashtra so we are feeling better now still i am not going out because because of my age and my diabetes doctor has not allowed me to go out but uh, actually my home has become my office and <laughs> i'm constantly working because we had lot of work in this pandemic period yeah you have indeed and we're going to come to that later on in the conversation but yes to begin with i probably just want to know what is it that got you started in this amazing work that we're going to hear about this afternoon yeah actually i am the child of uh, freedom fighters my both parents were uh, working in the freedom movement and they were both trade union workers also so but i was not interested in any of that i was interested more in the playing uh, on the uh, field there some indian games which i used to play or i used to sing and i was very content with that and i did my library science i was working in the college uh, sorry i was first working in the patents office where we take patents mm. but uh, unfortunately both my parents died in 75 75 and 77 and uh, that was really a shock to me because i was the only child and there was i mean suddenly i became uh, lonely and then i wanted to repay to my parents you know then i tried to understand what they are doing uh, they were doing rather and then i realized that i had to fulfill you know uh, something which they had wished and then i uh, Uh, and it was as it was 1975 my uh, my mother was a very much feminist and uh, at that time only this international women's year was declared and we were writing uh, we were reading articles writing and then trying to explore what is feminism because well, that was not a very popular word at that time my name of my organization is stri mukti sangathana it means women's liberation organization but people used to laugh at us you want liberation from whom husbands or children or from families and uh, we used to argue with them but at the same time in that decade 75 to 85 which was U- un decade also at that time there were a lot of uh, um, movements i will say to change the laws on because there are all uh, 100 years laws made by uh, british uh, uh, rulers Main. and yeah uh, about the rape about dowry i mean so many things you know there was prevailing there were some re- practices also in the society so to change those laws we fought for that whole decade and slowly uh, when we established as a group we started getting lot of uh, uh, interaction we started get, uh, interacting with the women and men also <laughs> and what happened is that at that time actually i start i learned how to write songs on women's movement we had some songs we had a cultural troupe but i we wrote songs and uh, we started you know we were all singers so we started singing those songs so it was a kind of a cultural troupe that was in uh, 1983 and i wrote a play then because i connected all those songs together and i wrote a play which is known as girl is born it is translated in eight languages and uh, we had almost 3000 performances of the play you know even outside india also in many states in uh, in our national language hindi and our state language marathi so uh, the play was so popular and women started coming to us they wanted us to solve their own problems so we started a counseling center but we were we were not knowing what is counseling we were all you know we nobody we had uh, learned anything uh, about the social work we were by our own um, passion <laughs> we were working as a social workers so there was no training or anything so then we got some volunteers who were actually trained social workers and they started helping us so basically my organization is a volunteer based organization even up to year 2000 for 25 years we did not even collect donations i mean we used to work everybody was a working woman our trustees and everyone and we used to support our organization that was the 
pattern of the organization for almost 25 years so so i i i want i want to us to hear lots more about that story in a minute but i want to pick up on something that you said which was how you've used art or playwriting or song to bring about change or understanding can you say more about that yeah definitely because we wanted to reach out to women who were illiterate who had never gone to a meeting who had never attended any seminar or anything they were just you know toiling in the fields or in uh, in the uh, service sector and so many places we were not uh, i mean we were also with middle class women but then we were really at the uh, working towards the lower strata of the women so they did not know you know they had no actually they had not even used to attend a meeting or listen there and uh, uh, listen for one hour so song was a very powerful medium you know when in the songs only we we had put their own problems and we will tell them what are the solutions we won't leave only at the problems we'll tell them what are the solutions how we can come together and fight so that was very popular you know and then uh, you will learn uh, you'll be surprised to know that our play in most of our state it was done in schools you know so now also whenever i go to some place some girl or somebody or some woman comes to me and tell me that when i was in school i had performed your play so there are thousands of women like that it is not only our 3000 performances so that play has become kind of a historical play so when we started counseling center then we fought with the government or we collected 40000 signatures for daycare centers that we, we, we our major demand was that women should get uh, wages and they should uh, they should be recognition of their work so where they will keep the children so daycare centers is a need of the uh, need, was need of the hour even now it is needed but it it should be properly run so we started daycare centers how to run daycare centers was also a, a kind of a challenge for us and afterwards we started uh, when we after the beijing conference we thought we have to reach out to men and when we go to men you know reach out to men when they are grown up that's of no use so we had to <laughs> catch them young so we started a school based program <laughs> and how do you get them young yeah so we started a school based program for the girls and boys both and if we'll go to boys only with the equality they will not listen to us so we made a, a syllabus of six subjects in which the um, adolescent sensitization all the issues were there like stress management what is adolescence vocational guidance sexuality education vices and also our constitution mulya shiksha value education so how to incorporate values into the children about equality but if we'll talk only about equality they won't listen to us so we took, took our indian constitution which is a kind of a um, very ideal for us and we started explaining to children about the indian constitution what are the tenets of that and how we can uh, so we reached almost a half a million students girls and boys both in last uh, almost 10 15 years and we published a syllabus and uh, published book and we Uh, all over the state we went and uh, talked to the students and made training of teachers you know tot what we say and, uh, so uh, training of trainers and uh, they in, in turn took uh, sessions in those schools so it was also very important milestone in my organization's life and every five years we had changed the activity as you must be seeing that we we were never satisfied with whatever we are doing and taking only one activity so so, so you've <laughs> over the years changed what you yes. do but yes. but not what you're about is that right yes. you're you're yes. about the transformation of society and about yes. the liberation of women and families yes and we never stopped any activity you know we continued with that because after our performance was seen uh, actually many women um, came to us as a to work as a volunteer and so we started new and new activity and uh, so we wanted to go to reach out to a uh, uh, women from the lower set of society our all efforts were 
like that only. They were all middle class women, but uh, middle class working women. That was the uh, uh, that was our uh, our uh, identity. But we wanted to reach out to women from slums, and we knew our limitations. That though we toured the whole of our state with a bus, and there are many men also with us, and we to toured all the state with our play. and post exhibitions and the films and all that and whole day we will be in one town and talk about uh, women's problems and all that so we trying started reach out to many men also i mean that i must say that the in the organization of such tour the men were very important uh, played a very important role so after this we felt that um, we should do some more uh, constructive work though we had Daycare centers as a construct example of constructive work, but we wanted to do something else. So when we reach out, we were going to slums to perform our plays. We made these waste pickers. So we made a survey. Actually, our uh, characteristic of my organization is we never uh, just somebody is telling us or some funding agency comes and tells you, oh, you do this because at that time uh, everybody was working on AIDS. so there was a lot of money also in aids so everybody was telling us you are such a big organization you must work on aids but we didn't do that we wanted to find out what exactly we want to do and when we did survey we found out these way speaker women who are the uh, lowest you know in that strata so so can you tell us because i think not everyone will immediately pick up on the the task of a waste picker So yes. can you say a little bit about that yes. for us Kyoto? Yes. Yes. Actually waste pickers are those women who are actually there in the uh, in the you know India there is a caste uh, system is there and they are uh, they are at the lowest step in that ladder. And we uh, because they are they usually that's called dalit or shedil caste women who were you know uh, by their social status they were at the uh, at the bottom but also because they were below poverty and they were illiterate and many a times this all women who came to city urban uh, platform they were actually uh, had no work they were migrants and they were landless laborers whenever there is a drought they will come to the city in search of job but we also when we did uh, found uh, did the survey we also found out that this is very uh, thankless job and people are just throwing weight waste and nobody wants to pick it up nobody wants to sort it out and it is just thrown and it goes to dumping ground and these women go to dumping grounds and um, collect uh, waste from there and sell it and there was a hands to mouth existence for them the child they were illiterate their children were illiterate the girls were getting married at age of 12 so all these things we wanted to change but we thought how what we are going to do with that and so how so, did and, you go about that yeah so we actually at that time urban self help group was not very popular as you know um, in bangladesh mr mohammad yunus really started a revolution with the self help groups but that was in rural area urban areas there was not much uh, information about self help groups so we thought that we should take this new this thing and have a self help group the reason one of the reasons is that we saw that these women were in the trap of poverty because when they will pick up waste and as their hands to mouth existence for them what they will do is they will go to the middleman who was buying their waste and if they suppose today somebody some guests are coming or somebody sick at home and they want uh, maybe 2 pounds Or, uh, two pounds. So from where they will get that? Because they were they did not have any bank account. Their husbands were not working. Most of the time they were alcoholic husbands, and uh, so and they used to suffer a lot of domestic violence at home. So these two pounds for two pounds they will get it from the middleman only, and then they will repay them for many years because they don't know how he has given them these two pounds, how they will return it. So they were in that debt trap. all the time hmm. so so what we did is the first thing we did was to start their self help groups so these women were cheated by the uh, middlemen and other people so many times 
what happened is that they never trusted us first they said why you, why you want to take our money so we had to show them that we will not take your money so we took them to the bank bank was not ready to open their accounts at that time so we had to fight with the banks and then take this 10 women to the bank and open their account when they realize that we kept their money in their own account and they can now uh, get the money when they want from this bank account they were very happy and they started trusting us believing us that we are helping them we are not after their money so let me say this i uh, with gratitude i must say that there is a, in the uk there is a organization in london war on want so i think it was established by british labor party and they actually approached us that they they were interested in organizing unorganized women and then they offered us a donation at that time we don't have we did not have even fcra to get the money rather i told you up to 2000 we didn't collect donations only so uh, so they actually approached us and they told us that we will help you and that's how this work started with their donation and then we really did not look back because there were only first 10 women then became 100 then 1000 and now there are 5000 women and we are spread up in six cities so so that's a that is our journey so far and and jyoti can you just give us a picture of some of the things that those self help groups so so think of a particular self help group and tell us a bit about what they do how they meet what they do together yeah actually as you uh, you must be knowing because you had seen it mm. that women stay in a community and that is a very closely knit community with same caste people will stay in the same community and so we told them that you, you choose your friends and you make your group so they are staying very close by so whenever they will come from work that is she uh, maybe at 5:30 6:30 7:30 and remind you that women uh, have to do lot of double duties and here not only cooking or only washing but here they have to fetch water and for that they have to stand in a line queue even toilets are not in the house so if they have to go to toilet there are queues for that if they want to food grain there is a queue there so either they will use their eldest daughters for that standing in the queues or they will themselves will do that then also they have to mostly they were uh, in laws and or the mothers will be there with them so they have to take care of them also they have to look after children and they have to face the violence of, from the husband so all these things they were suffering but they will all be together at least once in a month collect their their money and then they will first we took the responsibility of putting the money into the bank but now we slowly we taught them that you have to do it, do it we won't be you know permanently we won't be doing this for you you have to learn how to keep the money in the bank how to make this all transaction you must know what is a transaction how to choose how to find out who is most needy is you have to select who is most needy and you have to pay so that way and then we took lot of training for them we had 16 sub uh, topics uh, syllabus in which we published a book on that and we and took what those sort of topics yeah there was one on health one on self help groups then also how good parenting equality of course legal literacy what rights you have and so many things so many things health was of course in two three modules you know personal health public health also the contamination due to waste then uh, we used to teach them about the waste also sorting how the exploitation is there how why they have to come together and how to develop their own waste business and that's why what we did is we may, we formed a we formed or we helped them to form their own federation of self help groups so all the help self help groups get got together and they chose they had chosen their own leader and that was registered as a trust separate trust of waste pickers only they were office bearers president secretary everybody was a waste picker only and, so, and one of my memories of, of visiting with you 
is going to visit one group um, and when we were there there were something like 10 or 12 different women all spoke yeah. about yeah. the impact that yeah. being part of the group had had in their lives and in their children's lives and on their yeah. their men's lives yeah so two other things also we have taken with this is not only giving lectures on health but we opened a dispensary for them because usually what happens is that government dispensaries you know which are cheap free for them but they are always open in the morning and one woman who is sick and she has to as i already said that she has to get that day the garbage and sell it and then only she will cook the food at home so she won't sit at home and evening all the dispensaries are closed so if she's sick where she will go so we opened a dispensary for her gave the tetanus injection anti tetanus injections to them also we saw to it that the children go to school because one thing we had decided uh, is that west speakers children should not be west speakers that that was our uh, um, i can say we we resolved that we so can you we, say that again west speakers children should not be west speakers yes yes they can be collectors they can work in the west business but if you will see if you see the total uh, ladder or uh, pyramid of waste so women are always at the bottom they only pick up the waste but the whole business is in men's hand so everybody asks me why you did not have any feminine uh, other work for women and why you are going to waste uh, this waste management so i said women are always at the bottom in the waste management also so we have to help them to come up and they have to do their own business so self help group were there for the money lending and uh, uh, and helping them for the dispensary and all that but we again founded their own cooperatives so each cooperative there will be 40 women and these were also registered with the government the cooperatives so if suppose in a housing colony what we did is we appealed to those housing colonies that you give our women your dry waste so it should not be dirty you give you segregate it yourself give them the dry waste and they will do composting of your wet waste in your compound so that was a really breakthrough and and the women's cooperative started taking contracts with the housing societies so they will go they will examine they will and so we started giving training to women how to do composting how to do biomethanation biogas and also how to do fine sorting because what happens is that they don't have any space to sort out their waste so what they do is they will collect it and mix waste so they will sell so that gives a very uh, low rates to them but if you segregate you get triple rates but there is no space there is no storage space there is no transport how they will do it so we asked the uh, municipality to give them the space and that was given to us so women have their own space to sit there and sort it out and when they sorted this out people were really people were also happy that they are not now sitting on the road side that was also wrong only sitting on the road side and sorting sorting the waste uh, on the road itself so this also solved one more problem and also to teach them how to use gloves masks and all those things and how to take care of your own um, Uh, cleanliness your own body all those things we had to teach them but that really uh, gave them lot a good amount of work you know so so some of what you're describing jyoti is so incredibly practical yes at the same time you're really really clear that what you're trying to do is to change people's sense of their own self worth yes. all the time yeah self it's self dignity also dignity for their own work because we firmly believe that what waste speakers are doing is connected with environment you know if we compost it means you are um, catching the methane you trap the methane you do composting or if you do biogas that means you are trapping the methane and methane is 20% more dangerous than carbon dioxide mm. for climate change 
for greenhouse gases. So it's a dangerous greenhouse gas. So when we do composting, actually we are helping the nature. And this was this was the contribution of West Pickers to the city. These people don't understand. Doing this kind of work, it's contribution to the city. People feel they are all poor women, what they do. This is a nuisance, they're thieves, thieves. And then this is one more thing is that they're saving the space and dumping around. They are carrying out all the weight on their own shoulders and heads. And they're taking out and sorting it and selling it and working in the very uh, contaminated atmosphere. The whole dry waste is contaminated, but they, they work there. So this is also contribution. They're giving raw material to factories. That is also a contribution. So all this contribution of waste, because it's totally ignored by society and municipalities, both. And they're saving the money of corporation. Sorry. Let me tell you. And, and so you are enabling a movement which is right at the forefront of tackling climate change. Yes, yes. So this is very important work which is always ignored. We speakers are really doing all this work. And uh, even there are so many green fronts by, uh, funds by UN and all in climate change conferences. They promise so many things. But this uh, green fund never reaches way speakers. And, and so I know when we were talking earlier, Jyoti, you talked about the three E's of your work. Yes. So yes. can you say a little bit more about that? For I was yes. just fascinated. Yeah, it is, it, it is the combination of economy, empowerment and environment. All the three. So economy, so, because, uh, because we, they are saving the taxpayers' money when they are doing this work. Empowerment is their own empowerment teaching them the uh, dignity and also telling people. So we are actually working in many fronts, you know, talking to middle class who doesn't want to segregate. I mean, they feel that it's caste wise, th this is their job to do it. So we have to tell middle class that we have to forget caste now and you have to segregate your own waste, keep it separate, which is not a practice in India. So this practice, you know, you have to teach. So now we also have a school program where we have to teach children because I'm sure that only children will save the earth. So, so you have to tell, go to children and tell them how to do it. Convince municipal corporation that they should have strict rules. They should find people who don't segregate. Then also give space for composting so that the methane is trapped. So, so many things at a time, I mean, with the public, the society, with waste pickers themselves, because many of the, them were not uh, interested, you know, in composting, because they feel that they get instant money when they sell the dry waste. But if they do composting, it also means that they will get the salary after one month and uh, daily wages they won't get. And also that's very dirty. The wet waste is very dirty. Dry waste is that way. Comparatively, I will say. Another thing uh, also I would like to add that um, the European countries and, and especially US and all that, you know, they always say that uh, they are very environmentally responsible and uh, doing everything. But actually, up till now, what was used to happen is that all low, low quality plastic and even sanitary napkins and diapers and all such things, which nobody will touch, they used to send it, you know, only recyclable kept there and all this dirty pl plastic and dirty uh, garbage was sent to third world countries, poor countries, to poor people. So that you say that your atmosphere is very clean and you are environmentally responsible. And all these poor people are really uh, doing all these things and dirty. But mind you that you are, you are actually generating 10 times more waste than us. And, and one of the pictures that will, I think, haunt me for the rest of my life is to be visiting India uh, and visiting the communities where you work and enable others to work and just seeing mountains and mountains of waste. Oh, God, yes. and, and knowing that for many years, my country was responsible for sending some of that waste to your yeah. country and pretending that we were dealing with our environmental problems. 
yeah another thing is there is this law called epr extended producers responsibility where reduction you know uh, generating a good amount of uh, uh, gen generating uh, environmentally friendly products environmentally friendly products that is very important so reduction is very important but nobody even bothers about the reduction of waste so i feel that self help group uh, total movement was very important in all these things because now we are teaching uh, these self help groups how to fight with this environmental problems why we have to get support price for all this dirty garbage why should we do that work that's what they ask Shoti, I'm sure that that as you're talking, people are making connections, and they've also got questions for you. So if I can yeah. just be encouraging people to put yeah. some of those questions in the Q and A box, then we'll get round to answering yes. some of them in yes, a definitely. few minutes. But yes. what I'd like to ask you now is. How do you convince people who have power, so governments or institutions or wealthy people, how do you how do you convince them to change? Yeah. What's been your experience? Yeah, the policymakers you mean to say. Yeah. yeah. So where are there are vested interest? you know there is a lot of there are a lot of vested interest in waste management also so we have to convince them go to them again and again and tell them that is one way secondly we have to convince citizens that what we are telling you why you should do it because it is not for jyoti mapsekar or for sri mukti sangathana or for waste speakers or for municipality it is for your own, your own generation your next generation you are doing this keeping your city clean for climate change global warming this is very important so once they understand that uh, then they really uh, want to make change and accept all this uh, methods which we are teaching them of course they have to pay for that the problem comes when the payment comes <laughs> and and can you tell us a story of how you've managed to change someone's mind pardon can you repeat please sorry yes can you tell us can you give us an example of a community or a bit of government or an organization whose mind has been changed because of the work of the women's liberation movement yeah there are many instances uh, now we are fighting with government to make a proper policy for waste speakers and we have a all india level uh, organization is there and that organization is now discussing with government about forming a policy some of some of our uh, uh, demands were already taken in the government rules and uh, government has now slowly it's very slow it's very slow it will take another i don't know whether i'll be able to see all the changes but but still still their changes are happening but they are very slow because you see as i earlier said there are lots of vested interest also but about the waste pickers i'll say one thing that the, all the girls were getting married as earlier said 20 years ago all the girls at the year of 12 uh, were getting married we our some of our young friends are very hardcore feminist and they were so upset that we are working for this organization and here the girls are getting married at age of 12 and why we are sitting quiet we should go to police station arrest them <laughs> so because law is for above 18 you should get married above 18 and why they are getting married at age of 12 so what we did is we started a education program in the community because we know that the girls are because you have to find out a solution you cannot fight with women because women started fighting with us that are you going to uh, do matchmaking for our daughters if they sit at home so what we did is we had a very large especially for the girls an education program we gave them scholarships we gave them uniforms and say that you must go to school and they should we started classes for them so that they will pass even there a lot of 
household uh, do a lot of household work they will uh, pass every year and go to next standard so that if you go they go to up to 8th standard then we have to still work very hard with them so that they go up to 10th standard and then they will cross age of 18 this was a very hard work at least it took 7 8 years but now i think very 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 low instances of child marriage now and and so that feels as if it's about finding solutions rather than identifying problems yes yes that is important no without the study to have problems and take a demonstration it's of no use you to to the government also you have to tell solutions these are the solutions also let me say that uh, now with the covid uh, that is the pandemic uh, the garbage is getting less because people are contaminating they are giving mixed garbage they are putting mask in that so we have to see for the safety of waste pickers also so now we have started giving them training in different vocations that is when you have compost then you have to te- teach them gardening so that they can grow vegetables and all that in the in the same society so that the compost is of is of use to that society or housekeeping that is the cleaning the houses and all that so all the jobs you know around the cleaning and around all these things um, other other uh, vocations we started teaching them that even cooking so many things we systematically started because one one must understand that they are all illiterate so we had to design special courses for them so all this uh, when we got, were getting donations we you will imagine that uh, uh, 5000 women every month we gave grains for 5 months almost 6 months rather from a, we when we realized the that women are starving because there is no garbage so we from april onwards every month we were giving them grains and we saw that the uh, children's fees are given we saw that they get mask and uh, gloves etc and also we started now the courses for them so those who do not want to be in the garbage can go out and do some other work so i'm just we're going to need to stop in a minute i could carry on talking to you <laughs> for hours no. after hours and hours but one of the questions i'd want to ask you Jyoti is how do you keep going you were saying 45 years you've been involved in this what is it that gets you out of bed every day and keeps you motivated actually my organization we are all group of friends you know we are there for 45 years and there is lot of support from the organization like suppose let me tell you many people write plays but if the organization is not uh, with you and there is a, uh, the, there are no actors who will act in your plays how the how there will be 3000 performances a playwright cannot a playwright can just write a play but you should have a team so there is lot of teamwork in my organization very dedicated and uh, very committed committed all the trustees and everyone nobody takes salary till date and we just do it with our own money we run our organization but now for this work we get good amount of donations and there is a i mean if you ask me from the personal level also my family gives me lot of support though my parents were not there uh, my husband especially is a is mm. a supporting me or is supporting me like a rock and uh, my children are also supportive otherwise if the children are against your work then they don't allow you to work or even husbands so to work freely to perform the play i used to reach home at 2 o'clock at night but there was no problem then morning i used to go for my uh, college so as <laughs> for my job so so this all you require lot of support moral support and uh, physical support also and if woman wants to become successful there is should there is the whole system is required if man is they say behind every successful man there is woman but for woman wants to become successful she wants a good system and not only man wow so so for women to be successful it takes a whole community to enable yes. that yes 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 <laughs> thank you so we've got a number of questions coming in 
Uh, so one of those questions is, what have been your ways of getting teenagers or young people on board with your work? Uh, one way all these years was our plays. It is The Girl is Born is not the only play. The three, four plays are there. So when pe people uh, see our cultural troupe, people go to our Facebook and they see all the activities, they immediately approach us and they talk to us about... Uh, our activities and they want to, because they feel that yes, we can do some activities at least, uh, give some time for all these things. So, so getting volunteers, uh, I mean, as I earlier also said that ours is very much volunteer based organization. And we believe in that. So if you have 100 staff, we have 500 volunteers. We have our own magazine. So people write free for our magazine. We publish books. Nobody asks for money. We just publish books. So we have published so many books, around 25 books on women's issues, on waste management, and so many other things. So whatever we learn, you know, you always publish in book. Because everybody should understand. If we have counseling center, we'll publish a book on counseling center. If we run creches, we have published, but it's all in our own language. We publish a book on creche. Or in the garbage also, we have published so many books on garbage, how to manage it how to organize waste speakers. And so that feels as if all the time what you're doing is you're creating something where yes. anyth anything which is being created, the money raised from it is always going back into the organization. Yes. And I, I feel can we are really fortunate. We are with a group of creative persons. I'm not the only one. I'm a face of the organization. But behind me, there is a whole team of young and old. Our oldest is 90 year old. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Another question, Jyoti, which has is around, you, you talked a little bit about this, about at times the, the women who were waste pickers found it hard to believe in themselves. So... Yeah. So how have you overcome the resistance from waste pickers themselves over the years? It took a lot of time and it took a lot of patience, you know, to talk to them again and again and have their own groups. As I said, actually, you won't believe it. Now we have um, uh, barefoot counselors in the community. So that, that now we have come to that, I mean, this journey, you know, that the women become themselves barefoot counselors for the social issues. Or if there, there is a demonstration on Women's Day, they're all there now because we had to, we had to take the larger perspective and take, talk to them about the, uh, the issues comprehensively. It's not only garbage and all that. We were talking talking to them about the worldview, about the uh, feminist issues and so many other things. So it is not only, uh, not a very narrow this thing about only waste management and uh, so everything. Suppose we say health means not only COVID, COVID we they give them medicines, but how to take uh, your personal health or their children's education, how to do good parenting. So many issues we are tackled with them. So, so that really gave them confidence. And trust also, build a trust. So confidence and trust. Yes. Jyoti, you have been, I know, one of the people who have inspired the, the journey of Weevolution and inspired the, the journey of self-help or self-reliant groups Yes. in Scotland and across the UK. If there was one or maybe two pieces of wisdom that you would want <laughs> the movement here to learn from you and the movement that you are part of in India, what would those be? Yeah, one thing is that women should become friends, you know. Uh, 
i mean the group should be uh, uh, group should have a very friendly atmosphere they, when they become friends you know they understand each other's problems that is one thing and secondly i feel that uh, there should be consistency in all the work and they should study the problem we have always when we went to a speakers we studied their problems and then only we got into it so studying the problems of the society studying what are our own abilities and then what we can do into that and also uh, how we can help others all these things should come together when the when the group forms for and always we should always remember that uh, we have to you know look at the needs of the uh, needy people that is the first thing we have to do we always what happens is that in the self help group also everybody thinks about themselves only my problem but what are the other problems of other women what they want who is most needy so all these things also are very important so for a wonderful set of ways to end this conversation that sense of the importance of women becoming friends and being yes. friends in this movement that sense of deeply understanding the problems that we are trying to tackle together uh, and that sense of the issues are ours and not just mine uh, feels yes yes stunning but i think that you should also uh, take men along with you <laughs> that is very important men I, i think you should not uh, men uh, you should not keep men behind because if they are behind then there will be a problem if they are with you helping you involve them in your activities that will be much better you will be more successful if men are there with you thank you thank you <laughs> as one of those i hope that men have a tiny part to play but i do increasingly believe that men need to find their place in yes. this work which is behind women rather than in front of them yes shorty thank you so so much uh for all your wisdom and your insights over the last hour it hardly seems like an hour but it is virtually an hour Yeah. Um, I'm um, I'm also thankful because you have connected me again with the uh, audience of Bevolution and your sympathizers and your um, uh, your members. This you. is the third time I'm talking to them, so I'm very happy. Well, it has been wonderful to have you with us. If I can just say, as we as we draw our time to a close, a couple of things. um one is that on friday this coming friday at 2 o'clock for anyone who's interested we're going to have a conversation which is about what might we learn from jyoti's experience and from the experience of the women's liberation movement in india uh that might help and inform the way that we go about things here in scotland and in the uk so if you're interested in being part of that can you put your contact details or just say that you would be interested in the chat box and we will get in touch with you after uh this call is finished can i also say that we've got one more uh in this series of conversations learning from the global south and that final conversation is going to be in the 23rd of january at 12:30 p.m. and it's going to be with Aloysius Fernandes and Aloysius who the 
who we evolution have also connected with in India on numerous occasions. And Aloysius is in many ways the founder or one of the core founders of the self-help movement, not just in India, but across the world. And it will be a conversation not to be missed. So put that date, 23rd of January, 1230 in your diaries. But in the meantime, if you'd like to carry on this conversation, put your contact details in the chat box or let us know and we will carry on that conversation this Friday at two o'clock. And the final thing I want to do is to say thank you to Jyoti. Thank you. My pleasure. Not Jyoti, thank you not just for the conversation over the last hour, but for the way that you have inspired us here in this country and the way that I know you inspire people in the thousands of places that you engage with day by day, week by week, month by month. You are wonderful. And that, I think, is us. If I can thank everyone else for being part of today's conversation. And we look forward to seeing some of you, we hope, on Friday and others in January. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.